Number five, the removal of couch gaming. So removing split screen, LAN parties, and word of mouth sales was probably the stupidest thing you've ever done as a business. Halo Reach in 2010 still supported LAN parties and couch gaming. Bungie knew the value of the market that they created and they didn't neglect it. They nurtured it all the way through their tenure with Halo. 60 frames per second doesn't sell your game like split screen does. In fact, the trade-off 60 frames per second has are terrible. The graphics in Halo 5 look terrible for a 2015 game. Halo 3 looked better. Enemies look like shit and move at 10 frames per second when you see them from a distance. And sometimes they just pop in and out of the game because it can't handle all these things moving at 60 frames per second. Word of mouth, couch gaming is a much better selling point than 60 FPS ever could be. And again, it's something that is part of the already successful formula and you've taken it out to meet a graphical standard. Now let me tell you something, 343, when I have friends over, I don't show them Halo 5 and say, hey, wow, look at this game, it's got 60 frames per second. That's not how I can sell your game to my friends. The way I can sell your game to other people that I know is through word of mouth. I give people I know a glimpse of what you have to offer by having them come over to my house and experience it with me rather than watching me and saying whoa the game looks smooth but I can't play it with you so I can't judge its gameplay when you see one of your buddies eating some dope ass teriyaki you think to yourself man I want some of that and then you buy teriyaki that's how it works they have fun they're inspired to buy an Xbox Halo 5 and a gold membership better bing better boom that's how you spread your game that's how most people even found out about Halo in the first place you ask any of us Halo veterans how we found Halo. Most of us are going to say we played it at a friend's house, we got absolutely hooked, and now we're lifetime fans. That's how you get your games to spread like wildfire. But once again, you made a bad business decision that heavily limited the sales and popularity of your product, and you also slapped everyone in the face once again. We play Halo because it's a fun game to play with friends. We don't play it because it runs at 60 frames per second. As a business, I sincerely hope you understand this concept. Number six, all the technical stuff. So Halo 5 is an online only experience. It has a ridiculously large file size and Australia and New Zealand are essentially fucked if they ever wanna play matchmaking. Having wait times up to 25 minutes just to find a game. I mean, at this point in Halo 5's lifespan, people in Australia and New Zealand are lucky if they can even play the game. If your entire game is only accessible to people with a gold membership and a solid online connection, you are alien alienating all of the people that don't have those things. And 343, there is a sizable portion of them. Once again, another market that needs to be appealed to and not neglected. Now the file size of Halo 5 is absolutely ridiculous. Downloading Halo 5 can take up to seven hours. And in some cases it takes even longer than that. And this isn't one of the many Xbox One games that you can start playing after it's like 60% done downloading. You have to wait for everything to download before you can play it. But what about those people that uninstall Halo 5 because they wanna make room for something else or play another game? Do you think anybody will want to reinstall Halo 5 when they know how inconvenient it is and how long it's going to take? What's worse is that Halo 5 does not have free DLC as some people think. With free DLC you have a choice of whether you download it or not. But with Halo 5's updates you don't. You have to download it. And you know all those wreck weapons, vehicles, power-ups that you'll never use and some that you'll never even have access to? Well, they take up a huge portion of the game. And once again, you have no control over that. Why is this game so fucking big when it still doesn't have the content that fans want? There is absolutely no reason why Halo 5 should take up 87 plus gigabytes on a 500 gigabyte hard drive. You are expecting people who buy your product to sacrifice one fifth of their hard drive to play your game. Look at this comment right here. If I had 100 gigabytes dedicated to one game that I wasn't a hardcore fan for, I would delete it. You nailed it. 
You've given the offline market absolutely nothing. You fucked over an entire continent of people that want to play your game, and you demand an outrageous portion of the Xbox One's hard drive for your product. Those are terrible business decisions. And by doing all these things, not only do you handicap your targeted demographic, but you also make the game as inconvenient to play as possible. And as a business, you should know that convenience is everything. Number seven, the story. Well, we all know the campaign is terrible, but it goes even further than that, because 343 is pushing expanded material into the story itself. So now the group of people that can actually understand the story and characters is incredibly small. And because Halo 5's story is so bad, nobody is gonna wanna go to the expanded material to learn more about it. So actually hire someone that knows how to write and tell a good story and don't force the expanded material down the throats of your audience. Offer people a complete awesome story and then add on to that with expanded material. You need to do that 343. What you shouldn't do is create a half-assed incomplete story that most of your fans hate and then expect them to go buy expanded material. That's not good business. Number 8. The File Browser now when I recorded this, it was long before 343 had announced the file browser would be coming in the September update, Anvil's Legacy. But the things I talk about still apply to the whole situation of the file browser. So just keep that in mind for this section. So Tom French said a file browser was coming seven months ago. So again, it goes back to that point of deceiving your fans. Again, the successful formula is already here. It's already been done. We've all seen what a good file share does for the game, integrating a way for people to share clips, screenshots, game types, and maps in a game is fucking brilliant. It's a brilliant market to take advantage of. And yeah, the Xbox One does have that as a console in and of itself, but the Xbox One can't record clips at such a high quality. And the sort of file browser features that it kind of has is nowhere near as good as what Halo 3 and Reach had. Leaderboards, time trials, guys, all these things, looking up stats without having to leave to go to Halo Waypoint. Compress the files of your game better so you can afford to put more stuff into it. Then the features probably wouldn't break so much. Stimulate your community so that they have things to share, to talk about, so that they're encouraged to communicate with people in the same community. When you take the file browser out of the successful formula and try to sell it back to us 10 months later, you lose a a lot. And if previous updates are any indication, the file browser will probably be incredibly buggy, glitched, or may not even work at all. You've already spent so much time and effort creating your forge, yet you haven't given the community the tools necessary to stimulate custom games, forge, and make your game grow. A file browser does nothing but good for the game. Oh yeah, yeah, there's a file browser on Halo Waypoint, but the point is it's not in the game. The game is what people play. People don't play Halo Waypoint. They play Halo 5. The file browser needs to be in Halo 5. Once again, you need to take advantage of the successful formula that was created over the course of a decade. If you're trying to maintain a healthy amount of players for your game, this is the type of market that you need to have on day one and you need to stimulate it. Number nine. Who are you trying to appeal to? So 343, every time you come out with a Halo game, you try to appeal to a brand new market instead of appealing to the market and fans that you have. Halo Duty 4 tried to steal Call of Duty's audience. This plan hilariously backfired when Black Ops 2 came out, and Halo Duty 4 lost half of its population on that day, never to return. Halo fans don't want Call of Duty, they want Halo. With Halo 5, you made it a T-rated game. You took out all the military aspects of it. Spartans no longer bleed. The Spartans act and look like Power Rangers. And there's no bad language. You basically made Halo 5 with the thought that you would appeal to children. Children? For the most part, your fan base is in their teens and above. Do you not know what product or game you are trying to sell? Now you make Halo 5 in an attempt to appeal to the movement-based FPS games, like the newer Call of Duties, Destiny, Titanfall, this type of genre is on the rise. But the thing is, you're not making a good Halo game. You're making a Halo game that is copying other games. 
big point in business, and I'm sure most of you know this at 343, is that companies want to create lifelong supporters of their product. You get people when they're young and they'll be spending their money on your product, hopefully for the rest of their lives. What Bungie did with Halo cemented so many people like me to continue buying Halo merchandise, games, and supporting the franchise for the rest of their lives. In the span of about four years, you have almost undone everything that Bungie did to me as a loyal consumer. When I heard Halo 5 was not going to have split screen, I almost swore off the franchise for good and sold my Xbox One. I almost did that. The problem is once again, you have all these veteran players that are incredibly upset with the direction of the franchise because you're trying to use Halo as a product to appeal to a new fan base and you're leaving us in the dirt. The bottom line is your veteran fans, that group of people that spends the most money on your products, more money than anyone else, they're being pushed to the side and they're leaving the franchise for good. You had us, 343. You had us for life. Lifelong supporters. Yet somehow you've managed to totally neglect that market as well. And it's no wonder your products are losing profits and players. Veteran fans want a file browser. They want playable elites. They want a classic playlist. They want good storytelling. They want couch gaming, LAN parties. They want all of these things that you have failed to bring them. As a result, you lose the most dedicated spendthrifty market that supports your product. Number 10, a polished, functioning, consistent experience. Simply put, Halo 5 has the most inconsistent, restrictive multiplayer I have ever experienced. Shit is just constantly changing. There's all these new bugs that have been introduced in the updates and haven't been fixed. I never know what type of maps are going to be in each playlist because sometimes you put in new maps, sometimes you take them out, and over Halo 5's lifespan, I don't know which maps are consistently in which playlist. The game that shot shall not be named actually showed what game modes and maps you would play on in that playlist. Why didn't you do the same for Halo 5? And let's talk about the inconsistent playlists. Jesus man, the amount of changes Halo 5's playlists have gone through over the course of its lifespan could be its own fucking novel. I'm not going to go into the details, but just so you know, providing a consistent multiplayer experience that changes ever so slightly is much better than an inconsistent service that is always changing. That's that's not how you sell a product. You can't be pumping out new versions every goddamn month. Just find the successful formula and go with that. With Halo, you need to offer a polished, relatively bug-free game on day one. I mean, not even the microtransaction aspect of your game works all the time. You'd think as a business you would make the microtransaction system the top priority. But holy fuck have I run into the retrieving data bug a lot. And boy, oh boy. Boy, does that discourage me from buying rec packs. When I know that at any point in time, I might be totally locked out. Like, the part of your game that is meant to make you more money doesn't always work. I mean, are you a business or are you a joke? All in all, you, 343 Industries, had the insane benefit of inheriting a wildly successful, popular market and product. You also inherited the formula for success. Yet in your tenure as creators of the Halo games, you have been doing what seems like everything in your power to make Halo as unsuccessful as possible. You have left dozens of successful markets in the dust. You have failed to take advantage of nearly all the aspects that made Halo popular and profitable in the first place. You have done so while at the same time telling us the game will be better and congratulating yourselves for putting infection in the game seven months late. Because of the poor business practices that I highlighted in this video, and keep in mind I didn't talk about all of them, you are losing out on an insane amount of money, players, profits, and success. If you really are a company that is trying to make and sell a successful product, by now you would have figured things out. I just wonder how long Microsoft is going to let you continually run their flagship series into the ground before they actually do something about it. And I hope you understand that as a business, you could be making so much more money and creating a much better experience for your fans and making them very happy. Make us lifelong consumers, 343. Make us lifelong supporters. 
Alright everyone, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed the video. If you've got an opinion on this video or how 343 could make way more money, then post your comments down below. Also make sure to subscribe to the Act Man channel and like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter so you can stay updated with any possible videos or funny cool awesome things I might be saying. Alright, links will be in the description and on screen. This is the Act Man, signing out. Peace!